Hey YouTube, today we're going to be taking a look at these Orico 32GB DDR5-6000 memory kits here. They come in the box with a 6000CL30, better than your standard CL32 32GB kit, but it is somewhere in between, you know, like your super high-end CL26 that we're seeing now with the really, really low latencies, but those run at higher voltages. So we're going to take a look at these and see how well they perform. Orico is a brand that has provided like flash and storage base solutions, but they're kind of branching out now into the non-volatile memory. So in this case, DDR5 RAM. So we're going to take a look at this memory kit and see if it is a good alternative. So right off the bat, let's do a little unboxing here. So it does have more premium looking packaging compared to the standard DDR5 memory kits that I'm familiar with. So this is more kind of like the G-Skill Trident Royals. So good foam packaging here. And then it has a little installation guide. And if you've been watching this channel before, you're already relatively familiar with installing DDR5. And then we come to the memory kit itself. So, pretty good looking memory modules. These are RGB. So let's take a look at it here. They are actually very well packaged. So they are actually enclosed in these rubberized plastic covers here. I believe this top one stays on for the RGB, but they do have the gold pin contacts protected here down at the bottom. Since we're installing two kits of memory, or two sticks of memory, I should say, you're going to install them on A2, which is the second memory slot from the CPU end, and also the fourth one, so the, far the farthest most slot. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these. They only go in one way, so look for the notch. Line it up. And press it down. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and turn this on. You guys can see code 15. And you got your RGB. And I forgot to install the, the speaker at the bottom, so we're not going to get the post speed. There's your 99. And there it is. So there we go. So we're going to do yes to reset FTPM. Okay, BIOS has been reset. So because this is a new CPU and new RAM. Alright, so we are using a Ryzen 7 9700X, and you can see... The memory frequency defaulted to 4800, which is totally fine. You can see on the left side here, 16 gigabyte and 16 gigabyte in A2 and B2. So if we go now to the advanced menu, if I can remember how to do that on here. Okay, so in the advanced menu, what we wanna do is, so the nice thing about this memory kit, right off the bat, this memory kit has both an XMP and an Expo profile. So if you are on a Intel platform, you can load the XMP profile. However, you can still load this on a Ryzen platform. It'll work fine. If you're on a Ryzen platform, you do have the Expo profile, however. So I recommend doing that if you're on a Ryzen platform. If you're on an Intel platform, you can also load the Expo profile. So they work both ways. We'll load Expo here because we are on a Ryzen-based platform. And that is going to be DDR5-6000. And you can see the cast latency here if we zoom in. 30, 38, 38, 76. So the 76 is quite low, which is good. So that means this does, is going to be lower latency and 1.4 volts. If we go to the advanced memory settings, 
and we look at the timings profile here. So it wants to use these values. These are the default values for this memory kit. Now Gigabyte's BIOS does have a high bandwidth option that you can enable. It's called high bandwidth support. If you do this, basically what it does is it will tune the TREFI. So, but let's go ahead and first load the profile and then we'll come back in and then we'll, we'll change the TREFI demonstrating the gigabyte feature here. We are now running at the rated 6,000 mega transfer speed. And the other thing that I probably want to verify is the sub timing. So here you can manually set the TREFI. However, if you're on a gigabyte motherboard, you can just turn this on. So let's go ahead and enable the XMP slash Expo high bandwidth support. Save that and see what it does. Okay, with that in place, now when we go down to advanced memory, you can see now Gigabyte has tuned the TREFI value to the right hand most column over there. So 46,800. So that is quite fast. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and install this in the ASRock motherboard. This is going to be on an X870E Nova, whereas previously we were on a Gigabyte Aorus Master. So, as you can see here, so I have cleared the CMOS, so we gotten rid of the G-Skill memory, and now we're looking at the Orico memory. And it looks like that was pretty good. Okay, so once you're in the BIOS, similar to Gigabyte, we can see here it booted up at DDR5 4800. And we go to the OC Tweaker here. And the nice thing about ASRock BIOS is, is they have this DRAM profile configuration. And in here, it shows you, just like with Gigabyte, we see the XMP6000 profile as well as the Expo6000 profile. But Unlike Gigabyte, the nice thing about ASRock is that, and this is only true for ASRock, the other brands don't do this, ASRock actually lets you manually select the stock JDEC profile, which I actually really like that about ASRock BIOSes. So you can see the standard JDEC 4800 CL40 at 1.1 volt. But if we want to load the Expo profile, we can do that. We can also load the XMP profile if we wanted. And then the nice thing is it automatically will set the voltages appropriately as well as your SOC voltage, your a mem clock equals U clock mode, etc. All that stuff gets automatically set by the BIOS. So let's go ahead and do that. And there you go. It's running at 6,000. You can see that here. And it basically did the same thing as Gigabyte. Now the one thing, if you want to manually set your TREFI value right here, you can do that. So, you know, typically like 46,000, 49,000, that will be a good value. That's not going to require too much crazy cooling, but that is where you would go to set that. All right, and then once we're in Windows, you know, you just kind of want to do a final test to make sure everything is working as intended. So I am running the Forspoken benchmark because this is the best one for testing memory in an actual game because of the whole direct storage 1.0. Uh, but here is the Zen timings for this memory with this Expo profile loaded. So we have not done any custom overclocking. This is literally just the Expo profile that comes with the memory. And then you can see this is the processor, the 9800X3D. And you guys can see there is the 32 gigabytes running at 6000. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, the link to this product is in the description below. I am quite curious, you know, like if they are going to come out with a higher density kit, like a dual rank DIMM, like a 64 gigabyte kit, for example, or maybe even a 48 gigabyte kit that runs at higher speeds. This is probably a good memory kit for those of you that want to try to push cast latency lower. So like if you want to run at 6,000 in a one-to-one -one ratio, like we're doing here, but you want to try for something like CL28 or maybe CL... Uh, 26 even so we probably will look at that in a future video but this was kind of an overview of the new orico 32 gigabyte kit 
for gaming systems. So this is Raceline Neon with its RGB. Overall, it is a pretty fantastic memory kit for those of you that are first time PC builders. So memory training times on this is very fast and that is, there's really nothing to say in terms of negative. Um, it would be nice if the voltage was a little bit lower, like if it was 1.35 volts. Um, but this is CL30 instead of CL32, which is the reason why it is the way it is. But like I said, overall, uh, this is a pretty good memory kit for first time builders. Pretty good gaming performance overall. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks.